Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to try something a little different. So I've got a fuel cell I want to install here in the bus. There we go. <clears throat> so this is a 19 gallon rectangular fuel cell. I took some measurements behind this side curtain here right in front of my front storage bay on the driver's side. What I'm using this for, I want to use this as my fuel supply for my diesel heater and my diesel cooktop. I know a lot of people tap the main tank and just attach to that, and I thought about doing that. But the thing I don't like about it, if I was going to tap the main tank, I'd want to make sure that I left my pickup high enough up from the bottom that it wasn't possible to draw the tank dry, just so I don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to it. That said, that then means that if for some reason my overall volume gets down below about 10 gallons, I wouldn't be able to heat the bus. And I don't love that. <clears throat> now, I will have a wood stove, I'll have a hot water panel on the roof, so there will be some other ways to get some heat into this bus. But I don't love the idea of losing a heat source, especially in the winter time. I do want to spend some time traveling pretty far north with this, and I want to make sure that that's always an option. So. I wanted to have the ability to draw fuel all the way down to an empty tank and then know where I'm going from there. So what we have here, this fuel tank is just a standard rectangular fuel tank. Um, let me pop these loose for you for a second here. Well, maybe I will. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> So back here we have two more fittings on top. One of these is a supply, the other one is a return. So I'm going to be taking this filler section out because I'll be putting a remote fill on this tank. And that'll be able to tell me which one of these is the closest to the bottom of the tank. So I could use that as a supply, but what I decided to do instead, I got myself one of these. This is a sump that's designed to put on your diesel truck. But basically if I drill a three inch hole in the bottom of this thing, I can attach this to it put some seals on the top and I'll have two ports down here at the bottom of the tank so I can draw this thing all the way to empty pretty much. The bus because it has air suspension does have a tendency to kind of lean toward the back just a little bit. I will be putting some stabilizer jacks back there so I can keep it relatively level even after the suspension drops out. However, I can set it up to where the back is just a little bit lower than the front so that way if I put this sump in the back of the tank back there, then I should be able to draw this tank pretty much down to empty. Um, that said, I'll then put a set of fuel pumps in place. Here's one. So these are just standard low pressure fuel transfer pumps, like the kind you would normally use for, say, uh, the fuel pump on a carbureted engine if you wanted an electric pump. Basically, I'm going to have two of these in place and switches up at the front of the bus. So this does have a sending unit in it, so I'll put a secondary fuel gauge up near the front so I can tell exactly what's in this tank. But also I'm going to use these two for a supply and a return for transfer. What that means is I will go ahead and tap the main tank and I'm going to put a couple one-way valves in there. I'll show you those when I get to them. But the idea being I want to be able to transfer fuel back and forth, but I want to have full control of it. So <clears throat> if I need the extra 20 gallons that's in here, or roughly 20 gallons, because I run my main tank down too low for some odd reason, then I can transfer fuel from this tank into the main. If I need to go the other way, because this one runs empty, then I can transfer fuel from the main into this one. Now the other thing to pay attention to is by putting this on the driver's side, it gives me the ability to fill my tank from this side. I suppose most people who drive school buses are used to the fact that they have to get pretty close to things on the right hand side or on the passenger side. And I know you've got some mirrors along that side to kind of help you line up, but the other thing that I've noticed, having the fuel filler on the passenger side is just not very efficient if you're talking about driving this places and filling it up at a standard fuel station. I know you can go to a truck stop and a lot of them will have a filler point on the right hand side, but generally speaking, since most, most vehicles fill up on the driver's side, there aren't a lot of fuel pumps, especially diesel pumps, that uh, I've found anyway, that give me the ability to pull in on the right hand side, passenger side, and fill up with diesel. 
So, by having this on the driver's side, it gives me the ability to at least fill up 20 gallons, or roughly 20 gallons, and I can transfer that into the main tank. I'm pretty sure this is somewhere between an 80 and 100 gallon primary tank, so this won't fill the main tank, obviously, but I do have the ability to put some fuel in on this side and then transfer it and do it again. So anyway, there will be some steps involved here. I need to get the sump mounted underneath. I need to remove this, and I have this remote fill to put in its place. This is a one and a half inch filler point here. And I did that on purpose because what I've got is this guy. <clears throat> so this is the surround and fuel filler neck for a Jeep CJ. Now these are new parts, but I chose these because I've got a lot of experience with Jeeps and I know how these parts go together. So by doing it this way, I can, oh, we're upside down, there we go. I can put this right inside here and put it somewhere in front of the tank, probably right up here, right behind where the battery connects. And that should give me the ability to fill this up no problem. I can put a locking gas cap on this, and with it being right underneath my driver's side window pretty much, I have the ability to really point this where I want it. So it should be pretty easy to pull into a fuel pump with this setup. So basically what I need to do first, I need to get an idea of where I want this thing to sit. Let's get the parts off of there. Generally speaking, I want it pretty close to the front of this uh, cargo bay back here. Now this is actually the cargo bay where I'm going to be installing my uh, diesel heater, my hydronic diesel heater. So it'll be a very minimal fuel line going from the tank to that point. So I can get pretty close to that. My sump is going to be sitting a little bit back from there, so probably about here, right about there, obviously underneath. Then I'm going to build a framework for this out of angle iron. So two pieces of framework, one surrounding the bottom side, one surrounding the top side. And once I have those in place, then I can put some straps down between and mount this up underneath the bus up here. I also need to figure out where my filler neck is going to go. So with this sitting right about there, I've got these two pieces of rubber hose for the filler. So the smaller one here should go to this filler neck. There we go. Okay. There we are. So that'll go to the filler neck right there. And then this piece will go here, and I can cut this down to whatever size I need. I've got a splice to allow me to put the two together. So I've got plenty of room. I can move this way out in front if I need to. So I think what I'm going to do with it is try to mount it as close to the front up here. Let me make sure you can see what I see. And of course you can't. <clears throat> Turn you around here so you can see it. So I'm going to try to mount it right up in here, just behind that seam if I can. I do have to be somewhat careful because right on the back of that battery box is where the um, yeah disconnect switch is. So I need to make sure I stay behind that. But generally speaking, I think if I put this right about there, that ought to be about right. Then obviously I need to make sure that this fuel tank stays low enough that I can run things down to it. But again, I've got plenty of material to work with here, so it shouldn't be a problem. So let me see what I can do about arranging some things, and we'll bring you back. So what I'm going to do today is install the sump onto this tank. So this is the underside of the tank. The filler is on the other side over here, on the back side down underneath. So what I'm going to do, I measured to the center of the tank and marked a point right here about four inches back from the edge. I chose that because I've got two inch angle iron that I'm using as the bottom uh, mounting point for this. So I want to make sure I'm far enough back, make sure I'm in the middle. And I chose this spot because you'll see when I get up there, I want to make sure that my uh, filler side is on the front of the bus and I wanted the sump on the back. It's closer to the point where I need it. So three inch hole saw. We're just going to get drilling. So 
So, here we have the sump in place. Make sure you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Here, change your angle a little bit there. There we go. Okay. So here's the sump. So when you do this, just make sure that you've got nice smooth edges, top and bottom. I did uh, mess up some of the powder coating here, but this is aluminum, so I don't really care. So what we want to do here, I'm going to take this and make sure it fits down in there and sits flat. You've got this piece of metal to go on the inside, and this is designed this way so you don't have to reach down from the inside of the tank. So this one will fit up from underneath, and if we do it like this, you can kind of fit this in here, just like so. And that's going to exist right about like that, okay? So that'll provide the counter pressure for it. So what I need to do Generally speaking, this was designed for you to be able to leave the tank in the vehicle. I'm just doing it upside down so I can show you what's going on. But what you would normally do is put your O-rings on here, fish this up inside, put it in position, and just let it sit there. And then raise this up underneath, put your bolts in from the bottom with these little O-ring washers. And then you can attach things as you need to. So I'm going to go grab some Loctite. And let's get going. So I bought some of this Permatex Ultra Black gasket material. Uh, from what I hear, there is some concern about uh, these Amazon type sumps potentially having a leak to them. Uh, I don't want to ever have to deal with this again, so I'm going to put some of this in between the O-rings. Uh, basically, we'll put a little bit down in each groove here just to stick the O-ring down since I'll be doing it upside down, and then put a little bit right down in here or right around here on the edge and just make sure that I've got a nice seal going on. Clip that off. For those of you who haven't used this kind of stuff, you've got a nice point on the end of the cap here that you can use to puncture your seal. There we go. All right. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take the O-ring out temporarily. That probably would have stayed. In. Tell you what. Let's go ahead and put this one in. There we go. Okay, so you got a small one and a large one. And what I'm going to do is just provide a little bit of a seal around the inside here. And I'll use that to help me push things together. Gotta love the air bubbles. So normally, this little guy has a return pipe that threads in right here in the middle. So usually you would put that in there. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. So this here, what that means is that if you have a, like a lift pump that you're going to be pulling fuel out of, you can put this in here and that puts your return higher up in the tank so you're not uh, creating turbulence down here. 
Now in my case, I don't necessarily need to worry about that since these are both going to be draws on the tank. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that out. And that way I can pull fuel from either one of these and it doesn't really matter which one. That said, if you are going to use it, keep in mind which side, which fitting goes to the return. So in this case, it's the one here on my right, on your left as you're watching the video. So definitely pay attention to that if you're going to use it. In my case, I won't be. Just doing a little more here in between. and put our cap back on. <clears throat> okay, we have these two little O-ring washers here and a pair of bolts. What I'm going to do put a little bit of lock tight little bit of Loctite on one of these. That's way more than I need, but I don't care. <clears throat> All right, so then here's the plan. I'm going to take this and fish it down in there. Like that. And what I'm do, I'm going to take this and flip it over and just try to line up one of these. So remember, I've got that, uh, that sealant in here, so I don't really want to sit this down if I can avoid it. this started. Okay, there we go. Now with that in that position, pull that back and try to set this down right about where I want it. Right there. Okay, there we go. Now what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little more sealant around these areas too. Why not? Might as well. There we go. Okay, there's that. There's our little O-ring washer. Now, I'm sure you don't actually have to do that. Like I said, I don't want to ever deal with this again, so... Alright. Drop you in. Okay. I'm going to grab an Allen wrench and we'll keep working on it. Alright, can you still see? I think so for a little bit longer, huh? All right. Another blob on here. Back down inside. There we 
go. Yeah, I'm thinking you can't see anymore, can you? Gotta love working in the dark. Okay, there we go. Tight. And tight. All right, that should work out just fine. So, what I've done, I went ahead and put a couple of half inch NPT plugs into this. So I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit just to get a nice good, yeah, a nice seal around the edges. Uh, why not, we'll smooth it out a little. There we go, perfect. Okay, smooth it out. That ought to do the trick. <clears throat> so I'm going to let this dry, and I will be back to see you in a little bit, or just a few seconds from your side of things. Well, one thing I want you to all pay attention to, and I should have done a better job of this, measure twice and cut once. So remember I was telling you that I was going to try to put that sump on the far side of the tank? Well, guess what? There it is, right there, underneath the filler. So I flipped the tank upside down, started drilling my hole, and realized at that point that guess what? I was on the wrong end of the stupid tank. Anyway, it's gonna work fine. I've got plenty of hose for the fillers to get them over to where I want. I'll just put the mount on the side of the bus over here someplace and just run the hoses back this direction. So it's not gonna be a big deal, but I had kind of wanted to not have my filler point directly over that. So anyway, if it really matters to you, make sure you pay attention to it. So next step, I've got this remote fill right here that I'm going to put on in place of this guy. Yeah, I know it doesn't have the same powder coating, but this is all going to be up underneath the bus anyway, so I don't really care. This, I'm pretty sure, is a 10 millimeter bolt. Unfortunately, like every tool set, I can't find any of my 10 millimeter wrenches or sockets, and I don't want to take the time to deal with that. So I'm just going to use a crescent wrench, and let's see if this does the job. All right, perfect. Again, I don't care if I scratch stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and play with this a little bit and get this loosened up. As far as I know, at least if this one is connected similarly to the other, then there should be a ring underneath here that all of these bolts go into and a couple of gaskets. So I'm going to have to make sure that I don't completely disconnect that ring because I don't want to have to reach all the way down the tank. It should, pre should be a big enough hole that I can do that, so either way, whatever works best for you. But in my case, I'm going to try to hold on to one of these bolts and then just slide this out of the way so I can grab the ring and pull it out of there. There we are. So yeah, this had this little split ring underneath it, just like the new one does. So I've got a gasket here. In fact, I might just reuse this gasket. I think it's in good condition. But before I put the new one down, I'm gonna go ahead and reach down in here and just clean this out. Obviously I did some drilling. So let's get it separated and get that taken care of. There's our hardware. This one has a much thicker ring on it, so I'm going to see if I can go ahead and use this one. Make sure they line up the way I want them to. And it looks like it. Yeah. Yep. Good alignment. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to use this thicker ring. And then I've got this guy to go on top. So my plan will be, I'm going to put this over here, about like that. Now I could, if I wanted to, kind of offset this a little bit. In fact, that's not a bad idea. I might go ahead and do that. So that way this one and the vent line will kind of run right next to each other. I should be able to make that work. In fact, yeah, it doesn't change it much if you do it that way. So let's put it on sideways, just make it even. But everything here does line up well with the gasket underneath, so I think I'll be able to make use of that. So, let's vacuum this out and get to installing. And we're clean. So another thing, make sure your top's clear off, cleared off when you're doing this. Also, there are three fittings on the top of this and they weren't really labeled as to which one was which. 
I was able to tell this one was the vent because it has a little rollover ball valve underneath that I could see when I took the fitting off. These two though, I was trying to figure out which one was the supply that had its pipe all the way down to the bottom of the tank and which one was the, uh, the return. So anyway, what I found by taking this off, this one over here is the supply and the one in the middle is the return. Now that's important because obviously if I'm going to draw fuel off one of these, I need to use the supply line. So these two are going to be used to transfer fuel back and forth between this and the main tank. So this one here in the middle will supply fuel from the main tank back into this one. So that way if I ever need to refill this, I can do that. This one over here will be the one that supplies fuel from this tank to the main. And that way I have the ability to transfer fuel either while I'm filling or if I ever need to use this as an extra reserve. So for now, I'm going to take this. Looks like this, the uh, bolts should go in on both sides. It shouldn't be a problem, but I'll check one just to make sure. I'm just going to feed this in here. And the plan will be to just kind of hold it in place. Make sure everything lines up the way I want it to. Looks like it will. And then I just need to get a couple of bolts in. So I might... Go ahead and drop one bolt in here. There are washers on these. I'm gonna drop one bolt in here just to kind of hold it in place. There we go, that'll keep it from falling on me. And grab another. All right. So again, the goal here is to just get this started. So I'm going to start with this one here. in place. Now I can take this one back out. Make sure not to drop your washers in there. Slide that over. Ah, should have known. Okay, now we're started. And we'll just keep working my way around here, yeah? I figure once I have a few of these in place, it should be enough to hold it still. is realized. Okay, let's try this again. So I've got this one back in place. Let's make sure I have this right where I want it this time. Okay, so that's going to go right there, which means that one needs to go there. Okay. Attached. Pop this one loose again. Okay. Flip 
that around. There we go. Okay. Now, same thing. Just going to reach over here, push that one in. Should be about right. Yeah, it's moving nice and easy. Well, there we have it. So this is attached now. And I'll pull this out so you can see it. So what we have here, this is my vent line attached to the vent up here. This is gonna be my filler out on the side of the bus. I've got a surround for that. And I'll cut this piece down so it's sitting a little bit lower so it lines up with everything. And then I've got a reducer that I'll attach here and I'll cut these down to match as well. So that way everything should be connected right where I want it to be. But uh, yeah, the goal is I need to know where is this going to hang under the bus and then how can I line these up to make sure that I don't have any weird angles on them. Moving on to the next part. Next step, I need to make a carriage for it, or something to hold it up with. So I've got some of this one and a half by two eighth inch angle. I'm just gonna line this up. I could cut these at 45 degree angles and make a proper box top and bottom like that. But honestly, it doesn't matter all that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark this down here. There we go. Go ahead and do it that way, make it easy. I should be able to cut four of these. So two top and two bottom. Then what I'm going to do is take the leftovers and cut some pieces to go in here. I'm just going to weld them together, just end on like that instead of cutting the corners. I know it's not going to be quite as fancy, but I really don't care. Nobody's going to see this and it'll be plenty strong to hold it. Then I need to figure out what kind of spacers I can put in. I've got some strapping material to go down the side so I can put my lower frame on and bolt it together. And I think I've got some leftover 3 inch angle, uh, sorry, 3 inch U channel uh, that I used in a previous project. I should be able to stand upright on top of this to be able to space it out far enough that I can actually put all the hoses and everything in place. Let's get these cut. We'll bring it back. There are my long pieces. So I'm going to take a measurement between these two. This is rectangular, so it should be an even spacing on all sides. If I make this nine and a half, then I should have what I need. Let's check over here and make sure we're even. All right, we're about 
a sixteenth shy. So let's go nine and seven sixteenths. And if I make all four pieces that size, I should have what I need. That'll let these slide down in between, and I will definitely have some extra material to use for the mounting tabs on top and on the bottom. So you definitely could just take this and slide it in here and make your mark, make it a little easier. But like I said, I'm just going to do it this way instead. And we're all cleaned up and cut. So what I've got, full length pieces going down each side. These here are just going to slide in however close they can get, right about there. And we'll tack that together. I'm going to use the tank as my reference point so that way I know everything fits properly. Same thing over here. Kind of pop these together, tack those on, get them all welded, and do all my welds away from the tank itself. So that way it should be strong enough. And then I also cut some three inch pieces. These are going to be mounted out here somewhere. So these will function as the mounting tabs that I'll bolt up into the U-channel. And I've also got these, and I, we'll see, I might put these up top. But this is just kind of using up the leftover material. You could certainly cut these down, but it was easier on the chop saw to just leave this as is. So I may choose to put these up on top, just uh, extra support up here going across where the channel's going to be. And then the three inch one, in the case, will go down at the bottom. I'm going to stick it down off the bottom of the frame. I'll show you what that looks like. There will be some strapping material welded down on four corners that will attach to that. That way I can put the upper frame in place and then uh, raise the lower frame in the tank all this one unit and bolt it all in. Here we are under the bus again. For those of you who have watched my other videos you'll recognize this section from where I did the wiring here to connect the air compressor. So this is the space where that fuel tank is going to go. It's 30 inches long and I want to try to get it as close to this compartment as I can. So back here in this compartment is where my uh, hydronic heater is going to go, so I need a fuel line going in there. So it should be pretty easy to access if I do it that way. And then right above this space, up in here somewhere, is where the kitchen's going to be, so that's where the cooktop will be. So in both cases, it's a pretty short fuel line to get to that point. So what we have here, I need to figure out how to mount this. Now, a lot of these ribs up in here are closed, so I could drill in and put a nut in from this side, but it will get complicated to do that back here on this end because I can't reach it. I could potentially cut a notch out of this in order to give myself access, but on the other hand, I don't really want to cut this apart if I can, do, if I can help it. So I think what I might do, <clears throat> over here on this side, we've got this nice flange here that uh, these boxes are mounted with. So I'm confident it's strong enough. There are two bolts going in here, and that's it. And they're holding it nicely. So I think what I'm going to try to do is put an angle iron piece pointed out in this direction on the end of it. Um, I need to stay above. I could put one up here if I wanted to. I could potentially put something right down here just to sit on this flange. Now I'll have to see what I can do with that. That'll be the lower portion of it, but I might be able to make that work. Um, we'll have to see. I think, I think I can do that. Anyway, so maybe a piece on the lower frame sitting over here on this side just to hold the front up. There will be a bolt going in here as well. Now I also need to figure out how tall we're talking. But back here, put one up top. There's nothing up there to get in the way, so I should be able to drill through no problem. Okay, that's going to go up there. Good. Then over here, this one is open. Let me make sure I can see what you see. So this one is a standard U-style channel, just like I bolted to in the back when I was putting up the propane mounts. And this one is just under 30 inches, so I should be able to reach up there and grab it pretty easily. Now here we do have support for the side curtain that I need to make sure I don't damage. So this will be a piece of 3-inch channel sitting lengthwise this direction, I think which means I'm going to have to bolt it with a single bolt going through. But I can do the same thing over here on this end once I get all this stuff down. So all this stuff is left over from the old air conditioning unit. So all of this, all of that, I don't need any of that anymore. So 
I think maybe some of the, not even the wiring, I don't think. So I'm going to pop that all out of there and we'll start removing it from this side. That should give me something to work with. But anyway, I think, um, yeah, two pieces mounted lengthwise on the front. And I just need to make sure that I get far enough back to catch this channel. And then one piece back here in the corner to see if I can make that work. Um, I don't think we're big enough to actually get to the front there. So let me take some measurements and make sure this is going to work the way I want it to. I think I'm going to use this frame as the upper one. This one didn't go together quite as well as the bottom, and since this will never be seen, it doesn't matter. So here, this is where the two tops are going to go, where they can connect into that uh, C-channel. So this piece here will go across the top. In fact, it's big enough that I could just leave it as is and mount it right across there and bolt into these two. So this is a piece of angle, oh, sorry, a piece of aluminum channel. So I'm going to weld these on. There we go. Just like so. I'll go ahead and weld them front and back and I'll leave the top clear just so I've got plenty of room to work. I could add a little extra weld over on this side where I'm not going to be mounting it, but that's okay. Then over on this side, I'm going to take another one of these and mount it vertically. if you can see what I see. Sorry about all the movement. So we'll take this. This is two inches this way, inch and a half this way. So I'm going to try to go... I needed it mounted this direction. Like this. So I think I'm going to see if I can just put it into this space here in the end and just weld around it. That should give me plenty of stability. And it lengthens this out a couple of inches. Gives me the ability to put that right where I want it. So that should put things in the right place. That gives me three mounting points. Um, I don't think this is tall enough for me to be able to support it in the fourth position, but I think I'll be fine. Yeah, I think I'll be fine, because this will have a couple bolts in it here going along. We'll see what we got. Here's the top frame, oriented as it will be in the bus. So back here in the back, this is the inside section. You can see this little flag I welded on here. This is going to mount onto the flange on the side of the cargo compartment, the one that I was showing you up underneath. And over here, on the far side, we've got these two pieces. I'll grind that down. I just use it as a placeholder. So these are going to mount against the U-channel. It should sit, I believe, right about there. So I think that won't even be an issue. But we'll have this piece of U-channel sitting across it just to provide some space, and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut this down the middle. Or I might... Man, I don't know. I need to play with this a little bit. Now, the other thing I need to figure out is exactly how long are my hoses for my filler and my vent. Because if I can, I'd like to kind of put that up in here in the middle somewhere. As it turned out, my filler is going to be down on this side. And actually, that reminds me. Remember I was talking about how I put the sump on the wrong side? As it turns out, this was ideal, and I didn't even realize it. This sending unit right here isn't the type that has a vertical slider. It's the type that has an armature that sticks out that direction into that section. So actually, if I had put the sump underneath there, there's a possibility that that little float would have gotten caught on it when it was really low or down at empty. So I'm kind of glad I put it this way. But anyway, this frame, let me put it on here for you, should sit just like that. So you can see here, this is going to be the front. So we'll have that mount going across the top of it. And three inches should be plenty to allow me space to put everything together up above. And then over here, on this side, there's the flag sticking out the back. So this should also give me enough space, I think, to route my fuel lines up in between. I want to make sure that I don't drill any holes into anything inadvertently, but uh, I think we're going to be okay. Next step, after I take some measurements and figure out where to put the filler on the side of the bus, I need to weld the verticals onto this. So these will be really easy. I'm going to go right at the back here and just go straight down the side. And piece of strap material, one, uh, sorry, two inch wide by eighth inch thick. Just going to go straight down the side here and attach to a little three inch flag on the bottom. Over here though, I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put these and I think what I've decided I think I'm going to put them on this end. I didn't originally want to do that, 
but I think we're okay here. And since this one's going to have the majority of the mount anyway, it should be all right. So I'm going to put them right here, go straight down the outside, and attach to the bottom with the little three inch pieces that I put on. Next step, I need to measure out and figure where I want to put my vertical straps. So again, I could put these right here behind the mounting points, or I might go over here on this side. Uh, now that I think about it, I think I like the idea of running them right down here. That should be plenty of support on that side. And down here where I put the sump, look at that. It's like it was almost planned. It fits really nicely, and I'm really glad I got the one and a half by two angle down here. If I had gotten the two inch, I wouldn't have been far enough away. But it's going to go nice. So, four mounting points. I'm going to go one right here in the corner. One, I think I'm going to go right down here next to this seam. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. They should be the same length. Measure it out, cut them off, and get them welded on. There are four verticals. Two on this side. And down here, you can see them sticking out, and two on the other side. Next step, I'm going to take some little flags of angle iron, these little guys here. I'm going to drop them right down here and weld them onto the bottom frame so everything lines up. I can always cut that off, it's a little bit long, and that's fine. Not going to hurt a thing. Same thing over here. In fact, let's think about this for a second. I knew I measured it better than that. There we go. I'm going to put that right there in the middle. So we got four to weld on, and then we're done. At least done with this part. Well, here's our frame. So this is the upper frame here. I got it flipped upside down. So what you have, the top angle iron. We've got our two mounts up here that are going to go where that front piece of channel is. And we got the side mount back here. And I've also got these four verticals sticking down. So obviously these don't provide any compression strength. That's up to the tank to provide that. But this will work as it is. Let's flip the tank into position. Okay, there's our sump. So this is going to go this way. Slide right in there. Here's the lower frame. This one sits on here like this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna grab this. Okay, everything should be clear. I'll go ahead and drop that in there. And This one has slid a little bit, that's why these don't quite line up. So if I take this and pull it into position, you'll see that slides right where I should be. So I need to drill four holes for the mounting points here. And then I need to drill the mounting holes, two here and one on each of these pieces up front. But I'll do that on the next video. So I'll see you over the next horizon.